hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you join me on Mickle Wright's Flash on the Limb Anglers card and I don't think I've ever had a start to a blog so quick. I literally just arrived, set the net up, I flicked the rod <laughs> out, I didn't even have time to set the clutch and the rod screamed off and we've got the first carp of the session. <laughs> on the bank and if that's a sign of things to come we're in for a long enjoyable blog No sooner had this carp gone over the net than the wind and the rain arrived on the venue. So I've got the shelter up and left this guy in the edge. A beautiful little carp. And say so we don't know much about the venue, only what we've read on the website that there are quite a few small carp in with you know mid doubles. But what a great little start to the vlog. His fins up proud and a lovely little carp. So we're all settled in, got me tackle box there and you know all the bits and pieces just getting comfortable and i have brought the bait boat with me today as i say i've never been on this place before and just wanted to get used to it so looking at the swim and one of the lines that i've put in is in line with that gap in the tree and obviously you've got a skyline feature as well that is at five wraps um and what i've done is as you can see on screen now just put some of the particle out and i'm fishing a pink wafter on that rig so I'm hoping that the pink wafted obviously is going to get picked out. That bite that come down here was on a pink pop-up. And the left hand rod I have got fished tight to the snag. So you can see I'm literally right on top of the rods tonight. Because obviously if that left hand rod goes I've got to be on it straight away. I've just catapulted a bit of bait in this area. That spot out there. Just going to give it an hour on that first bit of bait and judge the reaction. Um, the hope is obviously to create a feature out there. It looks quite uniform It's a nice day. It is windy, but it's bound to be on a flash and it's going to come up on the catch pictures I would imagine you know at time to time when we're out there but just all settled in and just getting the basics done, you know the shelter up and We'll get a cup of coffee on in a minute and just sit behind the rods and play it by ear so first bite on the bait boated line and mr bream which was told there was one or two in and obviously when you're putting big beds of bait down like particle almost certainly going to be picking up one or two but what we'll do is we'll get him in let him go and get the bait back out so looking at him not actually a bad size what if you look at me hand there and you know, there's a few of them about, we're certainly going to get on the particle. So what we're going to do, we'll get the rod back out, some more bait in the bait boat, put another hopper in, and get it back out there. There's obviously a few fish in the lake, so I'm putting quite a bit of particle out there. You know, getting a good bed of bait out there, right on the spot. And then obviously, later on, when we've got a bed of bait there, we can keep casting to it. So putting quite a bit of bait out there really not normally what I normally do just going with an instinct and let's get it out there and see if we can get another bite so the rod's back out and by nature I am an angler that fishes to a feature this left hand swim is all about me my type of fishing that is what would attract me if i come to the lake you know structure now out here is kind of a preparation for when we go france later on in the year i don't know what the lake's gonna be like when i get there i know what it looks like 
but it's preparing me for, you know, creating a feature in a lake with bait. You know, the bait becomes the feature. I'm just trying to change that mindset. I would almost certainly have come to this lake and put either one or two baits under that tree or at least one under that tree and maybe one down the margin there. They would have been the spots that would have drawn me. What I'm trying to do is just build that little bit of confidence and, and knowledge. It's new to me. And out there is a little small bit of preparation for France. It's getting me used to putting bait on a, on a spot. And I'm not too concerned today. You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But it's getting me used to, you know, clipping up the bait boat to the spot and dropping a bait continuously on the same area, you know, in preparation for France. It's a lovely day, you know. Recently I was sat out with it bucketing down all night on a recent night session you would have seen. And today we're sat with the sun out and it's feeling a lot more like spring. So let's have a look at a bit of the food that we've got for the session. As I say, we're fishing tonight and into tomorrow morning until around about 10, 12 o'clock. Got some porridge for breakfast in the morning. Nice and simple, water and you're done. Some fruit to go with it. And for tea tonight, we're gonna try and cook them bad boys on that. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. They're almost certainly gonna get flattened a bit. But cooking on the bank, you know, it's dead easy to bring sausages and bacon. But sometimes, you know, you've got to bring something a little bit different. The nature of this swim and the snag has meant that I'm sitting a lot further forward with my bed chair. And what it's meant is this fold-all at the back, which you've seen on the channel before. But maybe this is the way to do it. Because obviously it's behind the bed. And it's all organised. Got the tackle box on top. You know, all my bits and pieces in there. And then that one's where they keep me alarms. But moving that bed forward, there's so much room in this bivy. And this is two man. But maybe that is the way to go. To sit a bit further forward, obviously, there's my bivy hold all. If I move that out of the way, I could move the whole thing back a bit. But it's good when you come across these little things that make it a bit more organised. So I've just done that piece of the camera about the you know, the back of the bivy, and the rod's gone again, and it must only be, what, 20 minutes since I put that next lot of bait out with the bait boat, and the rod has gone. Now, at first, I did think it was a bream, but it seems to be fighting a bit too much. And like I say, it's all about, you know, that prep, for France really, you're getting used to making a spot in the middle of nowhere and it is a carp and he's in the net and that is two hoppers to begin with and then we've just put two more out as well so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put an even amount of bait in all four and just have a big dump of bait out there this time and sit back on it because obviously that carp has responded to the bait going in much better one there's me thinking he was a bream. <laughs> Let's get him out and take a look. And there we go, much better one. Just over 14 pound. And if we get one of them off the tree, we're gonna be in for a bit of fun, aren't we? One thing about these car, they are fiery commons. They go mad on the bank. But in the water, like I said, I thought it was a bream to begin with. But it did have that slow, methodical fight. Get this lovely fish straight back. So we fed them two hoppers before, and we got a bite quite quickly. So, filling the hoppers up again. Two, the bait's beneath it all, so obviously, you know, you've got a good bed of bait. And it's like any other type of fishing, you know, you feed to bite. That carp has come straight in. It's a bigger one than we had down there. So everything is telling me, you put a bit of bait out, you know, it is a learning curve for me. If it kills it, 
it'll be just as much a learning curve as if it works i'm hoping obviously more bait gets the bigger carp in and more of them so let's get it out there and see what a difference it makes so with the rod back out it's time for me to try and get a bit of dinner i've got the heater on the lowest setting <laughs> and i think what'll be enough quite big it's going to get flattened it says 22 minutes in an oven let's see if we can cook them on the bank i don't know how many of these takes on the margin i'm going to get on the gopro because the first thing you know you know fishing locked up you've got to be straight on the rod but great fun and exciting stuff when that rod goes and the rod's bent round and looks like we've got two spots kind of working and as i ran to the rod i did disturb something quite close in so they are about and it looks like we have got two spots kind of working another one of those fiery commons great fun and there's obviously one or two of these smaller fish in the pool and it's looking like the better ones are them doubles, you know, are going to be the prizes. But, cart number three, I've got my dinner on the stove, so we'll get him straight back. Carp fishing's going quite well. Three carp and a bream, both spots working. Uh, operation, mmm, cook fish cake, not going so well. That carp is, I mean, it's caught, yeah. Not good. Let's flip it over and see if we can not cremate the other side. Well, I don't know about a fish cake. It's more like a hockey puck. <laughs> I can't eat that. So we're just moving into that after evening period now where you'd expect the fishing to be even better. I go fishing just to get a bend in the rod and I don't really matter what comes along. What we'll do now is we'll have a look at the particle mix that we're using today and what we're putting out in the bucket, you know, why we've picked it and the reasons for it. And it is a new mix that I've not used before and interesting to use. It's very different than normal particle mixes in its sizes and its makeup. So we'll take a look at that now. So after that, Brian, we'll put out two more of the hoppers now they are only small the hoppers in it there's four hoppers in the boat as you know and the particle mix that i'm using is a micro mix from treasure particle and as you can see there's all little types of small particles in there it's got buckwheat in it as well added and a few of the maize just to add that bit of visual to the mix you know, to try and get them fish on the spot. Though we've not fished this venue before, I always do my research and look into things before you come. And I did know there was a lot of mixed species in here. Now, I'm a great believer that a crowd, you know, attracts a crowd. So you're going to get all the roach, all the bream, and then the carp. And obviously, over the top so far, I've been fishing with a pink wafter from hinders i've just changed over now to see fake pieces of corn like you can see on the screen now and they've been soaking in the beetling so moving into the evening we have got a few decisions to make about how we're going to approach it that rod out there most definitely i'm going to keep out there i'm just going to keep topping it up as we get bites or if we don't get bites just leave it but as you can see there's a carp moving out there as well lots of activity over that spot so i'm not too worried about that spot i've got markers in the night where i can put the bait boat out the one that concerns me is this rod now we have got fish responsibly and with double figure carp in the water even if you're fishing this area here locked up by the time you get out of your bed you're not going to get to that rod by the time it's in the tree when you're half asleep or asleep so what i'm going to do i'm going to fish this area till around about midnight or I feel like I'm dropping off, you know, and I want to go to sleep. And then we can either take the rod in and just not have it out at all. Or we can put it out as a single in that area around here as a visual um, higher track bait. So just like a pink pop-up on its own away from the area. 
and then just fish that spot there. That is what I think I will do. And there we go. It's a carp. You can't beat that for live action. So one thing you could see then is how many fish bolted off the spot that well and truly on that particle. One's just come on that maize stacker, fake pieces of maize soaked in the beetle in. The other was on the obviously pink hinders wafter and these little rods, these little XTNDs, 10 footers, great fun. Really enjoying using them. You know, to pick that hold all up and you know way. And it does feel like a nice one. It is weird how the better fish are in open water, it seems. You know, we've had the small carp near the tree, but this is another better one. And it's come out there on that better particle. 10 minutes of putting the bait boat out with the fake horn. What a carp. And if a fish was ever going to prove the point I was making, it's this one. <laughs> Just creeping over 20 pound and what a beautiful fish. The light is dim. It's not really showing it off. I'll do a couple of close-ups. But that does prove the point, doesn't it? You hit one of these on that margin rod when you're half asleep, you're not going to stop it, are you? So we'll fish it just off it till we're tired and then bring it in or move it into open water. But boy, them fish on that particle. Lovely fish. Let's get it straight back. So that caption most definitely warrants a celebratory brew. If you follow the channel, you'll know it's kind of a ritual. I just sat here with me brew, watching the last of the day just ebb away. And what is amazing is just watching them carp. I would have probably played the clip when I got the bite when I was talking, and you can see the carp all the fish and everything just boil out the area as that carp left the spot but it is amazing now just to watch these carp slowly move back in started rolling over here slowly and then there's just been one or two now near the spot and as you've just seen there you've just seen one come out Of every session i always do look back and think well what could i have done better at the time when them carp were boiling in the swim when we got that big carp there was obviously a number of fish in the area so at that point i decided to put a bit of bait in and at that point maybe i should have just cast over the top and read the area a bit more and seen what happened rather than putting a bit more bait in insight though is a wonderful thing isn't it and it's very easy to sit here now and think well i should have done that but at the time we'd had a 14 pound carp a 20 pound carp and when we got that 20 as, as i said earlier the area erupted with a number of carp in the area i was seeing carp rolling on the spot moving back in so at that time i felt putting bait in was the right thing to do but on every session there is also positives to take from it and lessons learned and the biggest lesson i've learned from this session is the amount of bait that you can put in a bait boat very quickly and maybe i should have just been putting one hopper of bait in rather than two i really do hope you've enjoyed this vlog if you have leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel tight lines in your own fishing i'm about to get wet taking the bivvy down and getting back to the car i want to wish you all tight lines and i'll catch us all next week